Planets are exciting and fun objects to capture in the night sky. I often get questions though about what gear to use, how to find planets in the night sky and how to capture and process them. I have been struggling with that myself over the past couple of years, where I went from photographing this Jupiter with my smartphone, to this Jupiter with my refractor telescope, to this Jupiter with my Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. So in the first overview video, I want to share 10 tips that I find really useful to capture the planets in the night sky. The first couple of tips are about the kind of astrophotography gear you can best use to capture the planets. And after that, I'll share some tips on how to find and capture the planets in the night sky. Finally, I'll discuss some software options to process your pictures. It is my intention to make follow-up videos where I discuss each of these tips about equipment, capturing and processing in more details. So if you're interested in the topic of planetary imaging, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. And if you have useful information or questions about planetary imaging you want to share, please leave your comments in the comment section below. The planets are some of the tiniest and brightest objects in the night sky, so you'll need a telescope with a high magnification capability. Schmidt Cassegrain and Maxitov telescopes are extremely well suited to capture the planets in our solar system because of their long focal lengths and their large aperture. People often use a Barlow lens in combination with their telescope to further increase the focal length of their telescopes. A Barlow lens can magnify the image of a planet, but it doesn't necessarily increase the resolution of your picture. I would advise you to also get a sturdy, stable astrophotography mount that includes tracking capabilities to capture the planets with a telescope. Let me explain why. The planets in the night sky are at best about 1 30th the size of the moon, or even less. That's why you need a long focal length telescope. At these levels of magnification, however, you also need a very stable, sturdy mount to avoid any kind of vibrations that can destabilize your telescope. Moreover, as a consequence of the Earth's rotation, you'll notice that at this level of magnification, the planets will quickly move out of your field of view. A motorized astrophotography tracking mount, often called a go-to mount, is able to track the planets in the night sky automatically. This avoids the frustration of having to reposition and realign your telescope when the planets move out of your telescope's field of view. You can use both altitude azimuth and equatorial mounts to capture the planets. Altitude azimuth, or ALT-S mounts in short, are easier to set up and use as compared to equatorial mounts, which have to be polar aligned. However, ALT-S mounts are not well suited for deep sky astrophotography. So if you're planning to also photograph objects outside of our solar system, I highly recommend you'll buy an equatorial mount. Capturing the planets is most commonly done by recording short videos with the help of a camera that is connected to a telescope. Most planetary imagers use an affordable dedicated astrophotography camera that you can connect to your telescope. Planetary cameras are specifically designed to capture videos at night with low read noise and a high frame rate per second, or FPS in short. A camera with a high frame rate per second is very useful as it is able to record more data of the planet during a given amount of time. Luckily, planetary cameras are not that expensive. You can already buy some decent cameras ranging from $100 to $400 or euros. Alternatively, you can also start by connecting your DSLR camera or smartphone to your telescope as both DSLR cameras and smartphones have recording options. In addition to that, some modern day DSLR cameras like the Nikon P1000 have incredible optical zoom capabilities. Still, using a telescope and camera combination will result in a higher quality picture because your telescope has much larger aperture with which you can collect more light as compared to the Nikon P1000, which is not particularly designed for nighttime photography. When discussing the best times to imaging planets, we need to make a distinction between the outer and inner planets. The outer planets are the planets that are further away from the Sun as compared to Earth, like Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus. You can best image these planets during their opposition. When a planet is at opposition, this simply means that the planet is at its closest distance from Earth. For the inner planets, Venus and Mercury, you can best capture them when these planets are at their greatest elongation. 
At greatest elongation simply means that Venus and Mercury will appear at their highest position in the night sky just after sunset or just before sunrise. Opposition and elongation times can be found throughout the internet. The planets are among the brightest targets in the night sky, so it's pretty easy to spot them with the naked eye. If you're unsure where to look, Stellarium, Sky Safari and ISS Detector are three excellent apps you can use to locate the planets in the night sky from your location. If you have a go-to mount, all you need to do is select the planet of your choice and your mount will automatically slew to that location. If you plan on imaging the planets at high levels of magnification, it is really useful to attach a finder scope to your telescope and align the field of view of your telescope with the view you'll get in your finder scope. This can avoid a lot of frustrations at night. You can use the finder scope at night to get the planet into the field of view of your camera, after which you can fine tune the position of your mount so that the planet is at the center of your telescope's field of view. It's always good to check if your telescope is correctly collimated. The best option to check this is by defocusing your telescope on a bright star, like Vega, Altair or the Neb. If you defocus your telescope, the rings around the star should be spread out in an equal fashion. If that is not the case, your telescope is in need of collimation. Another important tip is to avoid imaging the planets when they are still close to the horizon. The atmospheric turbulence is very high at such low altitudes and that results in unsharp images. Planets are best captured by taking short videos of only one or a few minutes. Depending on the frame rate per second of your camera, you'll end up with hundreds or even thousands of pictures of a planet in your video. For example, if your frame rate is 25 frames per second, you should be able to collect 60 times 25 is 1500 images for each minute of video. You'll be able to select the best and sharpest images of that video when processing these videos. Planetary imagers who have dedicated astro cameras often use SharpCap or Fire Capture software to capture the planets. Both software programs were developed by some enthusiastic open source programmers, so be sure to donate a couple of dollars or euros to show your appreciation. SharpCap also includes a pro version, but you don't need a pro version for planetary imaging. You can find the links to both software programs in the video description below. The best video settings to capture planets depends a bit on the camera that you use. There are some general rules. Most planetary imagers will capture the planets at a high gain setting, often 80 to 90% of the maximum gain of a particular camera. This will result in a grainy video of the planet, but you can compensate for that in post-processing by stacking lots of frames together, so you'll end up with a smooth picture. Also, a high gain setting reduces the exposure time needed, resulting in sharper pictures of the surface details of a particular planet. As for exposure time, it is best to look at the histogram when catching the light from a planet. Both SharpCap and Fire Capture provide a histogram option. Most planetary imagers will put their exposure time such that the light capture will cover about 80% of that histogram. A final tip is to reduce your region of interest such that your field of view mainly shows the planet. This will increase your frame rate per second, so you end up with more images and it avoids capturing lots of space surrounding the planet, which you don't need anyway. One final tip is to use the fastest connection possible, currently USB 3.0, and preferably a short cable to connect your camera to your laptop or PC. You also should have a decent processor. This avoids frames being dropped from your video during your capturing time. Processing consists of two steps. First, you'll need to select the highest quality pictures of your video and stack them. Planetary imagers often use AutoStackert, which is developed by Emil Krijkamp, a Dutch software developer. As I'm from the Netherlands myself, I call upon all of you to donate a nice cup of coffee to Emil for creating this awesome freeware. I'll provide a link to AutoStackert in the video description below. It would take a separate video to discuss all options, but here are some general tips to process your videos. AutoStackit will first analyze and align all the frames in your video, after which you can create a stack. 
One tip is to stack only part of your frames. For example, you can ask Auto Stacker to stack only 25% of your highest quality frames, so you'll end up with a sharper picture. Other options in Auto Stacker are to sharpen your image by blending in some raw images and using Drizzle to get a sharper final stacked image of the planet. In the second step, most planetary imagers use Registex, which is freely available for further processing. The most famous tool in Registex is the wavelet option, with which you can further sharpen and denoise your pictures at different wavelets. The best way I can think of to explain wavelets is to imagine that your 1D picture is converted into a 3D picture. In fact, Registex creates six different layers that are stacked on top of one another. You can think of these layers as six independent pictures. Now, each of these layers can be sharpened and or denoised without affecting the other layer. And this technique really helps to sharpen and or denoise your picture, so you'll end up with a nice picture of your planet. I will make a separate video to discuss capturing and processing the planets in more detail. So if you're interested, please subscribe to the channel. If you have anything to add to these tips, please feel free to leave your comments or questions in the comment section below this video. Thanks for watching and clear skies.